add to that is um, there's so many scripts that we keep referring to, like 1984, all ways to connect, like we're doing now, we're doing in together. We can write our own scripts that are pertinent to our circumstances, to what we need now. That we kind of touched on in our last show. And it was we're more we're more focusing on say the economic side of blockchain, but the blockchain yeah. could help facilitate so much more. And what it basically is is that we bypass a centralized system, and we don't need what we were talking about before the show these middlemen that we kind of say, oh, we don't want to deal with the headache of having our own responsibilities up, and we're like, oh, whatever, we'll let we'll we'll trust the establishment to take care of it but no uh, it's kind of taking back our own responsibility but also to working together and saying you know what we don't need a centralized system to help facilitate things we we have our responsibility for for ourselves as individuals we could we could work together we could just uh, get up and and say hey our like-minded people like this is kind of what's been happening recently very recently uh with the minds panel show and i i see it evolving even more and it's amazing how much progress we have got with minds with the little bit of good people that we have here and having this environment where we, we feel free to express ourselves to communicate with each other and how it's been blossoming i remember when uh, Wildcard, you first brought up the idea of the global consciousness on June 6th as a, in the, in that group that I started, the set consciousness tree, and I was like, you know what? I was like, I like the idea, but I don't see it happening. And then now, I I can't help but see all the possibilities, and I'm really excited. Yeah, I just thank you. I want to address a couple of things in what you said because you've said quite a lot. I contacted Roger. Um, 13 years ago, the Global Consciousness Project. I just have this vision, and if we get our heads together, we can resolve anything, absolutely anything. And timing is what helps, what counts in our consciousness that we need to pull together. And timing is one of the most important things. And it seems like now, when we're surrounded by a lot of chaos, that's when people really start to look for, well, what can I do? What tools have I got? And we can see now they're there. We've got everything. It's just a matter of really connecting our heads together. Um, now, with the blockchain, one of the pushes has been, like why I've come back to it, is that we have this totally new blank canvas that enables us to create. It's like this blank canvas we've got all the inks and tools and what's happening is the same paradigm has crept in there's a dominant culture within the crypto community of venture capitalists guys that want to drive fast cars and pay hookers it's like why bring that same mentality in it's totally it drives me crazy that is what's dominating that banks are now trying to manipulate it into their mentality to access data that it's such a waste if this is how cryptocurrency ends up stay involved with the same people the problems become so complex and they're really very simple but being involved in that scene it kind of stagnates the the imagination so in being on minds it's just been a total so refreshing in that there's people that don't know much about cryptocurrency and i can speak on more a societal impact which is what i'm really interested in um so having the imagine imaginarium there for me i want to start thinking of systems for myself you know what is going to make my world more enjoy, um, enjoyable how can i move with velocity how can i pick up the slack and the lags exactly what I figured out for wiki being there about what i wanted out of life and what i wanted to make my life easier yes start there people is trying to fix put all these bit more blankets on people more systems stop it get out of my life i know what i want let me design it and then give the tools that i need imagine if we all do that and we we just need a really basic tool no added extras 
vibrationally, people connect on a cellular level as well. So, you know, all our thoughts and emotions, they are a vibration in themselves that, you know, connect with other people that match the same vibration. So that's how it kind of creates. But we're sort of taught, you know, in society that we shouldn't be selfish and we shouldn't think about ourselves. But actually, it does start with the self. Not in a, a selfish, I'm going to benefit myself and nobody else way, but in the sense that your thought processes and your feelings and emotions that you project are what connect with other things on a cellular level. And then you can create, you know, that's that's the great thing about your 24 Imaginarium is that you can all create together. This is this is what the idea behind this this um, phrase or tagline that I like to use with the Minds panel show. I, I don't want a hive mind, I want a mosaic of minds. And so each individual bringing their own uh, creativity, their own uniqueness, and it creates this picture that is greater than the, than the, uh, you know, the sum total of its parts. And also to going back to what you were saying about how what's happening at this battle with, with blockchain or with everything in the, in the new paradigm. And this is why it's kind of like important that we pay attention, not you know, what's going on on the digital landscape, but also to, to ourselves and to our own creativity, because you cannot solve what Einstein kind of said. I, I don't, I'm not going to quote him directly, but basically what he said is that you can't solve the old problems with that old way of, of thinking. You need a new way of thinking to solve, mm -hmm. solve the problem. You know that you get stuck in in that thought process um but i do like what you said about experiences on minds and it's and it's like i i phrase it as uh because i go, i was playing off of this idea that ideas are networks and so if ideas are networks the myths and the stories are the structures and functions and vision is the design and i i phrase it as deep network connections because we have these synchronicities that happen on minds all the time uh, yes. Recently, uh, me and Cartman one had that where I I so happened to check because you have to check your messages because like, I don't get a notification. Oh, the syn oh, it's just oh, isn't that weird that this happens? No, it, it it's not. It's synchronicity. It's quantum physics. It's a vibrational matches that uh, you know vibrational matches by definition are you know that's what the synchronicity is that's occurring that you're decoding is this. What I'm finding is the more I'm in tune with who I am, what I need, and my intention is to empower other people. I, I'm just feeling like I, I want that for myself so that I can share it forward like a ripple effect. And as I become more in tune with what it is that I want and I need, and it's really basic. You know, it is just food and a safe environment. It's really, really basic. Um, then I'm in tune with more of the vibration and incredible syn synchronicity is happening. It's unbelievable. It's kind of like I look around sometimes looking for cameras. <laughs> is this a setup? Yeah. So then imagining getting people around the world on a similar, with a similar intention. And some people are saying they're never going to get enough people. I know it's not about enough. It's really, sure. it's not numbers it's definitely the quality and i think also as well with intention when you have a, a clear intention your action but an action can be a, uh you know writing something it can be you could be having a very clear thought that is congruent to your intention um mm -hmm. and that is an action in itself about anybody else here but my reality is totally shifting the structure is becoming so blatantly an illusion it's totally like i'm really getting we made this up our ancestors we we created this system we started giving other people our authority we started yes this this era of being selfish like, mm -hmm. so um my mother to be talking about oneself, communicating with my mother, there was no self because she wasn't allowed to talk about it. So I'm like, who am I talking to? The question of, well, who are we? Who has the authority? If it's not ourselves and we can't even see it, why are we giving it away? It's, yes, it's time to shift that. Absolutely. Um, I want to touch on that a little bit more. 
what you're what you're saying too is about the attention and I think too how we have given up like the story or this power of ourselves and we look to other places and this is kind of what the whole like battle between centralization and decentralization and this is a little mini battle that I have with my panel show is like I'm like they always look to me to like start a show and I'm like it's decentralized that means you could start it if you want to like we still look for for authority we still yeah. look for approval to do something i'm like no you can just do it i like this old saying of the zen saying that you're the one that make like who makes the grass green and then and then so you come to this realization that you're the one who makes the grass green that you, you then goes back to what you guys were saying about the individual kind of coming into your own and there's a difference between what what what's been implanted to you where you think it's an intention but a true intention that's where you have to dig deep inside you the intention has to be very clear and then what you do from you know from having that clear intention is um, will culminate in a manifestation of a, what we would you know decode as a reality what we would view as a reality and it, the, what we see externally you know what we which in a sense is an illusion you know, that you know we see things externally in the third dimension, you know, <clears throat> which is the, the dimension we exist in. We see everything as external, when in actual fact we're all connected. But you know, everything is is a mirror, is a, a reflection of our thought processes, and our you know thoughts become things. People to for like I know for myself, what I got was that I am creating everything. And if I look around at the circumstances around me, at relationships that are off center, I know I'm creating that. So that's the confront. If we are and we have the ability to create everything, then look around us because we're creating this. And why are we picking like the worst and lowest form of the story of, of our reality? Why don't we? create a better one uh, but I like what you were saying about the DNA because I also too come to like that realization or intuitively understood that DNA is not only just a repeat system it's a rewrite system that uh, we that the, the story of, of what mainstream science kind of tells us is that all the DNA the you know the information and that you kind of like are slave to whatever that's written in there but it's a it's a for me I came to that uh, realization or this understanding that it's a rewrite situation as well that you with your intentions and this goes into like your pure intentions get rewritten into to that program and um yes uh, travis you want to step in here oh i was just gonna say that it, i call it like a system reboot or uh, not uh -huh. reboot, uh, but uh system system reset like factory reset you know uh, uh -huh. yeah and you reset it back to the factory settings, how we were meant to be, rather than what we were taught to be. Yeah. It's really yeah. interesting yeah. you say that, Lee, because I think that everything, you know, in technology, you know, with the internet, everything is, is reflective of the human, um, the human being. You know, in a sense, the way the human being is wired is, you know, the internet reflects the human, the entirety of the human being. Or the entirety of the human wiring, if you, if you know what I mean. I was going to say the blockchain also sort of reflects the DNA, like you were speaking of. The, yeah. the blockchain technology being the internet, where the, I suppose the, the 3.0 internet uh, that I envision, or a lot of other people might know. Fear, after five years, we've now got banks on their tails. That's it. Like, the thing that most drew me into the technology is the thought of kind of like ubering everything and uber has been fantastic even though it's centralized and it's giving people a sense of how we can live our lives we've got to, we talk about collaborative living and sharing we've got all these cars on the road with one person in them and the traffic and this congestion so the logic step is to rent each other's cars out the logic step also with computing is to bypass servers and utilize each other's space that's it's a natural progression so we're really on the cusp of um, a transformation because we I think there are a lot more people becoming aware that we are writing this there are a lot of correlations between humanity and computers have a look at um, artificial intelligence it disgusts me that 
of artificial intelligence. Sex robots are one of the biggest things to come out of here. I mean, this is totally indicative of the type of society we live in. Like, there's so much more <laughs> that we could do, but if we rely on the people that are designing technology, we're going to get more of the same. We have to, as a user, end user, we're the end user of these lives, bringing computational power that com- or that conversation into the program um, that we are. You know, Bruce Lipton discovered that the nucleus is not the brain of the cell. Cells live for two to three months without the nucleus. That's all been incorrect information. We're living on a foundation of lies and inconsistencies and not untruths from you because just seeing you popping into the Imaginarium and sharing all the information, what attracts you? What do you hear is possible from this? Yeah, yeah um, just listening to all these guys talk as well. I mean, with synchronicity, with myself, um, I was I, I have been experiencing it just lately. I mean, I think it was just only yesterday that I did come up to Satori and I did ask him about the panel. And before I even knew about it, he was the one asking me if I wanted to be on the panel, even though that that's what I wanted to do anyway. So, yeah. and from then it's just been been moving on. Um, I've only joined Minds as well. I mean, two, probably two three months ago, and to be to be part of something like this, it's um quite amazing what, what's going on. And then I think as well, I mean, if we are truly being ourselves, I think we can somehow synchronize to a bigger consciousness. This is where I'm not too sure if we can, if we are some sort of like global consciousness or I don't know, I was probably going to ask about your guys' input on this as well, what, what you guys think about global consciousness and are we some sort of part of it? And I guess we all connected in some way as well. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit, and then we'll see what everybody else uh, says. So, what I view it as, or how I frame it in my own mind to make sense, is that there's a difference between being conscious and then consciousness. And I view consciousness because I read uh, the Tao of Physics one time, and I got into Eastern philosophy. And basically, what Eastern philosophy kind of says is that everything is consciousness. And that we 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 are like a drop in this ocean of consciousness. So consciousness creates matter. And we they, they had this great story of the Hindu uh, cosmology, and where they said that there was in the beginning of time, and it's very similar to the Big Bang. Like there was the void, there was nothing, and then they became everything consciousness. And and consciousness or God because they use it in resting terms, got tired of, of just uh, basically kind of like with just him himself. So he broke himself up into two and then he started playing that he was a different person and that got kind of tired. So he broke himself into fours and he kept on going off and breaking himself until he got to everything and he, and he got tired. So he forgot that he was part of everything so he could play out this this play that that's happening right now. And yeah. so what I, yeah. And so that just kind of goes back to, I think we're kind of going back to that realization, which has happened within the, uh, we went so far deep into the atom and, and then we found out the quantum world and where we are re, re um, learning those ancient uh, intuitions that everything is connected, that, that the observer, your, your, your intents affect the, the basic unit of what matter is. And that's what the double blind kind of uh, tells us about. And so, so in that sense, I I view things as, and it goes in. It's kind of like an onion. It's a, it has these layers. And I like what uh, Rupert Sheldrake has in his theory of morphic genetic resonance. And so basically, we have these layers of pockets of, and I guess a term that I could use that, that I think everybody else could say is that they have this cloud of knowledge. So like us human beings have this. Uh, collective unconscious of, of, of a cloud of information that gets stored there and this is where the Carl Jung and um, Joseph Campbell archetypes come from and if you ever read um, The Hero with a Thousand Faces or The Power of Myth uh, if you haven't um, I look uh, I say, say you guys should look into that for the viewers or, or Miguel as well and what you find out through all these stories and these stories The Power of Myth says that the stories help for us to navigate in the 
world and and it, and what they were saying and now our news story is about uh, about technology and and this is why we use um these these words like programming and rewriting and decoding and uh, vibrations or resonance and we use all these technical language because this is something that we're making like a mirror image because we're creating technology and we're kind of creating it in our image knowingly or unknowingly and i think it's about time we come to the point to we start doing it knowingly and we see these a lot a lot of uh facto mirror images coming back to us as far as especially now with the blockchain especially now how how everything is moving to that it's it's and i love these these little videos and these clips and i, I try to use them in my in my uh mix-ups or in the visuals in the background where where the the structure of like the galaxies mirror or mirror image you know you ever seen that photo where the eye you look in the middle of the, the iris and it looks like a like a galaxy um yeah. the firing of, of neurons the the mirror image the firing out in, in you know the in the galaxy and there's all these these uh there's so much evidence to show yeah. that we're all connected that we're all uh aspects of the one infinite consciousness or the yeah. one infinite awareness or vibration you know there's so much evidence around us reflecting back at us to show us that um you know we're all connected fractals is what comes to mind it's it gets me that fractals haven't really been explored on a scientific level because they're so ordinary thinking in fractals i've heard somebody say that us we are part of the 55 trillion, trillion cells of an, an entity so until we can exist together in a, a harmonious form then this entity can't live so that's an interesting thought miguel i like the questions that you're asking for myself i love being on the end of this synchronicity it's beautiful it really it's like it wakes me up i i feel like i'm coming out of a coma i think there hasn't been enough energy put into this conversation to that and taking it seriously that we are vibration um how vibrations work we've had the quantum quantum physics theory of vibe but i think too it's it's this thing that one thing to understand i mean i don't even think we necessarily like society level understand it completely intellectually but even for personally there's one thing for me to understand something intellectually and there's another thing to integrate it into my being and this is like where the real work happens of um integrating and being uh, like that intuition and making it part of you like harmonizing with you I, i think that's what we're trying to get to is that and this is where the magic happens this is what meditation is is uh, leading us to this is where the creative juices flow um you know when you get into really good whatever you're you're and i think everybody is an artist and either knowingly or unknowingly we all have these certain um, passions or these certain gifts or these certain um, inklings and if you focus in on it and you allow yourself you let go of all that old programming and you kind of get in tune in harmony with yourself you produce um, this stuff that comes out and uh, I shared this story with Corey and I originally when I did the little intro or promo for for this for this show I I was a little bit tired and I was just going to put music and images and maybe a couple of like words but then I was like no I want to do like a little like mini intro so I go and I start like the music and I start I and I just had this feeling I'm like okay let me just let go and literally what I said there was not written down it was not practice it was one take and I was like whoa like even I viewed it like in third person like Did that just happen right now? Did I just say all that stuff like <laughs> Sounds like you let your authentic self as I say yeah. rather than the, the ego self which is the logical part of the human that is sort of saying oh should I do it like this or, or you know like being quite harsh on yourself and deciding whether it's right or wrong you just let yourself go with the flow you let your authentic self um be the captain you know and steer you in that sense so you didn't 
you know, you didn't think about it too much, you just went with the flow and that's the key, it's just allowing the authentic self is, is the the spiritual self if you like, the, the, you know, the true self if there's such a thing, without fear, if you eliminate all the fear of like, oh if I say this or if I do this then this might happen, you know, if you can let all of that go, that's when you can really rewrite the program or create a new program.